get out up there, but if you're all, and to the pe people at the back, I'll move forward. If you all, all have a look down this little walkway, you'll see um, glass doors. Yeah, so that's the school entry and exit. So inside this building is actually, like, it's really big, but that's basically all the interior sets are inside here. So what they do is they'll film, like, one of someone dressed in a school uniform, just walking down here, opening the glass door, but they'll never film inside. So that they'll stop filming when they've kind of closed the door or walk through the door. And then um, the actual school set is further in the building. But yeah, can you all see that? They basically just stick stickers on the glass doors and it looks like school. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now look over here to my left. Can you see like bricks and le le leftover building stuff? Just in that, like kind of behind the cars? Yeah? Okay, so there was a scene and Maybe four weeks ago, these portables got put in, but prior to that, there was no portables there. Um, there was a scene where one of the characters, one of the male characters, got hurt on a construction site. But basically, that was the construction site. So they don't go very far. They just they just use what's around them. Um, but yeah, that's the construction site there. Now we'll jump out and I'll move this little... Like basically, we can jump out and have photos with the errands for a sign. When you can see that yellow bollard they've got, usually that might be like across the road and that means that they're filming at the um, garage. So they might have been filming there yesterday, but we'll just move that out of the way. But before we jump out, you know when Paul Robinson lost all his money and he was trying to sell homes to make his money back? All right, those are the homes there. <laughs> so um, Fremantle Media owned all that land, which goes down to the, like, we actually see these houses the other side of them when we go to Ramsey Street. But they owned all that land and then sold it off to a developer. I'm assuming the agreement was like before you go to the general public, do you mind if we use some some of it for filming? So yeah, that's where Paul was selling. Oh. And don't touch any of this stuff because they're obviously going to film with it. So just kind of walk around it, please. Okay. Chill out. 
but they can use the building for like lots of different purposes because you can't see in there. So this little wall, they'll put a plaque up on um, where the brown bricks are and they'll just say like Aaron's for high reception and they will film that little section and you would be none the wiser yet. If you could see none of this and you only saw that little section, you'd think, oh, that's like really is the school reception, yeah? Um, if you have a look to your left, just past these bushes, you'll see three houses that look like they've been chopped in half. So, that one, so 22, the big one. That is the back of Carl and Susan's house on the street. And then, I can't remember who's that house. Oh, who's this? I can't remember. But anyway, that's 26, oh sorry, 24 and 26. But imagine if you saw nothing but that little side gate, like a little scene, someone walking into the side gate. You'd, be, you'd think it's on Ramsey Street, wouldn't you? But really, it's here. So basically, I'll talk heaps, I'll tell you all the information about Ramsey Street when we get there. But it's a lot easier for them to make their own houses, like the back of the houses, um, for any of the backyard scenes than try and do it at Ramsey Street. So Ramsey Street, they just use the um, front exteriors. But I know you can't see it here, but they have not skipped on these backyards. They look like legit homes. So this one over here has a proper pool in it. The big house, the first one we saw, number 22, Carl and Susan's one, is like decked out. It's got like um, bar fridges, fans going, like fountains. Like it's really, they haven't, they haven't tried to make it look like a set. They really like made it look like proper homes. That one there has um, like a proper undercover deck set area and a spa. Yeah, that one has a spa and that one has a pool, I think. Or maybe the other way around. Like, I've only been seen it once. But yeah, like I said, none of it's fake. So like... All of those, if you saw the back of them, is proper legit. Like, they got proper builders in, built it all properly. Now, the inside of this building, obviously, like, we've driven around it. It goes, far, uh, far, goes back pretty far. I've never seen the inside. That's how much, you know how, like, on that first video, Carl was like, we can't let you in here. Like, he means it. Like, I've never even seen it. Um, but basically, in there is the interiors of everything so the interiors of the Ramsey Street houses the school pretty much any interior interior you see on the show is in here but like I said I, I've never even been in there so also they will film Carl walking in so they use this as the hospital also so I know in the show the hospital is larger but what they do Carl actually doesn't go to a hospital in Melbourne and they don't film him walking in there what they do is they chuck an emergency sign up near those bushes over there and then they'll film him walking in, in through these doors and like I said, they're reflective windows so you can't tell what's inside but they'll never film above this white roof line. So because they never film, film above the white roof line, they're able to like merge, I don't know how they do it, but they're able to merge the image of Carl walking in into an image of a larger white hospital uh, because they don't film above the white roof line. So. That's how they do it. So Carl is always walking in through these doors. But they have also used that building as like a gymnasium and like a swimming centre. They can't have a few purposes for it. Mm. Anyway, that's the most I can show you. Like I said, it's just a bonus, but at least we got to see something. And we will head to Ramsey Street now. So Ramsey Street is literally around the corner about 40 hours a week, so kind of an average work day, but most of the <laughs> actors live out in the city, so they have to drive out here, and obviously it starts at 6.15, so you're waking up around 4 o'clock, and Libby had a kid, like a little baby, so she would have to get like the babysitter to come over at, you know, 4.30 in the morning, and then head, head straight out, but the thing that really got me was, say you finish work at 7.30, say you've got a big storyline and you've got a full day, then you drive back, home, you get home around 8, then you've got to learn your lines, alright, so you've got to all remember that they've got to also learn their lines, they don't have time during the day to just sit around and learn their lines, because during the day they have to act, so what Livia was saying to me a while ago is technically the actors all get their lines two weeks in advance, but, so that all looks nice on paper, like, oh, we give you two weeks notice, it's like, in reality, that's not what happens, so, if they learn, imagine if you learn 
a script two weeks in advance for a story that's happening in two weeks' time, you've still got two weeks' worth of work that is happening right here, right now, that you've also got to remember the lines for. So what generally happens is the actors don't learn the lines until the night before, because otherwise they just won't remember. So even though they do technically get it two weeks in advance, none of them are learning it until about... Um, yeah, a night before, possibly a day before, if they've got some time. Um, it does, but yeah, in reality, it's get home, learn your lines for the next day, all of that. And there's no patience for like, oh, I didn't remember. Like, if you continually do that, they will write you off the film. I mean, off the TV show. So it's really full on. Um, Libby was sick. Like Libby, Libby is single now with this son, but she also was single. Single. Ah, sick. I can't even say the word, whatever. She was a single mum for her daughter as well. So she had three babysitters. You would get your schedule for the following week on a Thursday night. So she had one like business day to try and like work out three babysitters with her daughter. I don't know how she did it, but I totally get why she's not doing it this time around. Yeah, so it sounds full on. Anyway. So these homes are owned by like
that looked out. Yeah, yeah. They're on that line. <laughs> Instagram's on our phone, there we go. <laughs> Are they fat on Oh, this is where Therese fell in. I don't know who to sing that. Thing here? She got pushed off straight into it, yeah. Did she die? That's a bit of a tiff. No, she was fine. <laughs> Just got wet. She's like a jacuzzi. <laughs> Probably the props used when Sonia was tempted by drink again. So you guys, I know even when you see this on TV, it looks so different from this. It looks way much bigger than it does right here. And She didn't come with me. I've been very overexcited. Shed on this now. That's the shed. Right, 
sorry, I didn't know which garden known was the actual oh, perpetrator yeah. of the terrible <laughs> crime in this house. But it was one like this. Honestly, I would have expected him to be...